It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. In the New York Times this week, the former president of Brazil, Lula da Silva, penned an op-ed about the right-wing coup underway in Brazil. He titled it, Justice Will Prevail. Brazilians are bracing themselves for the upcoming October presidential polls, where President Lula will stand for election with 13 other candidates, but he will be running his campaign from prison. On to talk about this with me is Mark Weisbrot. Mark Weisbrot is co-director of the Center for Economic and Policy Research and is the author of the book, failed. What experts got wrong about the global economy. Mark, good to have you back. Thanks for having me, Sharmini. All right, Mark, let's uh, start off with that op-ed in the New York Times that uh, former President Lula penned. He called this a right-wing coup underway. What does he mean by that? Well, that is a really apt characterization, I think. There was a lot of social and economic progress under the Workers' Party first Lula's eight years from 2002 to 2010 and all the way to 2014. During that period, you had a reduction in poverty of 55%. Uh, Extreme poverty was reduced by 65%. You had an ex uh, unemployment, of course, went down to record lows of 4.9%. And you had uh, a reduction in inequality, wages grew for the first time in years, wages grew by real wages, adjusted for inflation grew by 35%. The minimum wage grew by 76% uh, in real terms. And the uh, traditional elite of Brazil never really accepted that. So now they've been trying to reverse those gains. That is, and, and you can see that in the legislation they're trying to get, uh, cutting pensions. They want to privatize the biggest electric utility, the biggest utility in the country, which is the electric utility. Uh, they passed a constitutional amendment that said you couldn't increase government spending in real terms. And that's something that, you know, most economists in the world would, would think is, is really extreme. Mark, in Lula's editorial, he maps the history of his party, uh, PT's progress from 2002 to the time when Dilma Rousseff was uh, removed from office uh, through a legislative coup. Um, now, it did make progress, you just uh, admitted that, but Lula was also given the opportunity to address a whole bunch of other issues in the time he was in office, which was, you know, two terms, uh, where he had the opportunity to make certain changes and even advance the issues such as corruption in Brazil, but he didn't do that. So talk about that. Well, it is a very corrupt uh, political system, and he could have uh, yeah, I mean, it would have required probably a new constitution like you saw in some of the Andean countries, you know, in, in Ecuador and Bolivia and Venezuela, where they brought in new constitution. And uh, I think, and even there, they didn't eliminate uh, corruption uh, clearly. But there, I think he could have done that and aimed for political reform uh, first rather than the economic and social reforms that they did. But I don't know that that was even politically feasible. I don't think they went so badly on that. I don't think that was the real cause of the PT's demise and weakness. I mean, the weakness that the right was able to take advantage of in 2016 when they impeached Dilma without having to charge her with a crime. That was a result of the collapse of the economy uh, over the prior two years. They went into recession in 2014. And that's where I think the PT's uh, most important mistakes were made. That's where they did have uh, policies that worsened the recession and made it difficult or impossible to recover more traditional austerity policies, high interest rates, uh, budget cuts, cuts in public investment. Those were, I think, mistakes. They didn't have to do that at that time. And I think they realize that now. But uh, Tema government uh, is uh, only 
uh, implementing or worsening the situation with their policies, but they're not uh, uh, remarkably different from what some of what the PT had done during the latter years uh, that President Lula doesn't refer to in his editorial. I think they're much, much worse. Uh, you know, these cuts they're doing in the countryside, for example, to the Bolsa Familia program, which was world renowned for reducing poverty through uh, income support and the other programs they have, which affect, uh, you know, millions of people, the food distribution, the uh, water, access to clean water has been reduced. Poverty has, extreme poverty has increased for three years in a row now, that vast uh, difference and infant mortality even went up. The, the, nothing like this happened under uh, Lula. They didn't go after the safety net, didn't touch it at all, even in the worst years of uh, austerity that you had, or the worst period between 2014 and 2016. So this is a real right-wing vision with privatization and cutting pensions and everything. They, they're, it's, it, as I said, it's really, it's really quite extreme. Mark, uh, Jim Mattis, Defense Secretary of the United States, arrived in Brazil this week, a, a curious visit given that there's election pending, uh, particularly to have greater ties with the military uh, in Brazil. And we know that the Tema government has been actually uh, using the military to police the population. Uh, recently, more and more uh, uh, states are using military police, um, smacking uh, of of the dictatorship Brazil had once experienced. Give us a, a sense of what this uh, trip was about and what Mattis's objectives are. Well, he's trying to forge uh, closer ties with the Brazilian military, uh, taking advantage of the fact that there's a right-wing government. And this is something that, I mean, it would be terrible for Brazil, and it's already been denounced by Lula from uh, jail. You know, this is something that it's part of the right wing rollback that the U.S. is participating in. And of course, they, you know, aided the coup in, in Brazil in various ways that we've talked about here. And now they want to uh, kind of recolonize the region after it had become uh, independent in an unprecedented way in the first decade of the 21st century. So they're doing the same thing in, in Argentina and uh, in every country where they can, uh, where they're getting uh, more friendly and right-wing governments. And I think this is very important because this also coincides with the erosion of the rule of law that you see, uh, not only in Brazil, but in Ecuador, where they're trying to go after the president, as you've reported on this show as well, on trumped up charges in Argentina as well. And so, this is something that, of course, you don't see much here because the media here has been very consistently against the, the left governments when they were there. And, and so they don't see necessarily anything wrong uh, with the U.S. taking over again through means that are basically illegal. Mark, finally, uh, President, uh, former President Lula is running this election from prison. Uh, that's going to be uh, very difficult uh, given this. he's running against 13 other candidates. Um, do they have a chance and are there a preferred candidate on the part of the United States? Well, the obviously any candidate other than Lula would be preferred. Uh, I think possibly their preferred uh, candidate would be Alckman, uh, but uh, he's more of a center right uh, candidate than Bolsonaro, who is the far right kind of Trump on steroids uh, candidate. Maybe Trump likes him. We don't know. But I, I think that the main thing is they don't they want to keep Lula out of the race. That's the main thing. And he's in right now. I mean, he is running from jail and there will be a ruling sometime before September 17th on whether he can actually run for president. And if, if, if the court rules against him, which is uh, expected, but not necessarily going to happen, uh, then 
he would uh, most likely transfer his popularity to another uh, candidate from the Workers' Party, and they would still have a chance of winning. Mark, uh, the United Nations uh, Human Rights Council took a position on uh, Lula's candidacy for standing for president and whether he would be allowed to run uh, while in prison and while these charges against him are still pending. Um, what did they say and what weight do you think it'll have? Oh, I think that's important. I'm glad you mentioned that. The United, it was a United Nations Human Rights Committee, a panel of independent experts, uh, announced today uh, that that Lula should be able to run for president and they shouldn't while his appeals are pending uh, until he's, you know, actually uh, exhausted those appeals. And they said, uh, and, and, and this was, and then that the Brazilian government should not impede that in, in any way. And that's very important. And it comes after quite just recently, uh, 29 members of the U.S. Congress put out a very strong statement saying that Lula should be freed, that he didn't get a fair trial and he should be free uh, pending appeal. And so there is international pressure. It is clear uh, that the this is political persecution and more and more the world is seen to the media, even though, uh, again, the media has not been uh, friendly uh, to the Workers' Party at all. All right, Mark, I thank you so much for joining us. And we'll be following these uh, elections leading up to uh, the October presidential polls. I thank you so much for joining us and looking forward to having you back. Thank you. And thank you for joining us here on The Real News Network.